All right. There might be some problems with, so when I took my slideshow and I converted over to a notebook, there might be some like formatting errors. We'll see when we get there. Mm -hmm. Try not do tech. Okay. Fletcher circuits. We're going to hopefully knock out almost all of our notes today. Um, and then we don't do notes till after spring break. What? What? Wait, what, wait, what are we, what? Are we mechanical? Is that two, week, two weeks and then the test and then what? Was that one? Waves. We got waves after spring break, but. Uh, we have, including this week, is three weeks till spring break, correct? Yes. So if we have two weeks and then the test, so and like next Friday is the test, what are we doing the next week? Next Friday won't be the test. We're going to do this electricity for two weeks. And then study, take test. Okay. And then sayonara for spring break. I like sayonara. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, electric circuits. When we're dealing with electric circuits, we're not doing much with uh, alternative energy or alternative current. That's more of AP Physics 2 material. However, there is a little bit of difference when you talk about some things most people already know, and that's called voltage. Did you know every battery, like AA, AAA, there's even quadruple A, B, double D, C, all of them have the same voltage? I did not know that. They all have 1.5 volts. But what changes in them is how much energy they got stored up in them. So how long could they last? Okay. Now, there is a little bit of a tweak on the word voltage. Sometimes they use the word called potential difference. And we'll kind of unpack that a little bit. Is It's the potential for something to happen across an object. We'll, uh, we'll unpack that when we start looking at light bulbs and series and parallel and things like that. Or it can also be called an electromotive force, or EMF. I've rarely ever seen electromotive force used in an AP Physics 1 test, but I imagine there might be a curveball where they throw, calculate the EMF of this circuit, and you're like, what the heck's that even mean? All that means is voltage. So in this class, voltage, potential difference, and EMF all mean the same thing. Cool? Um, I think that's all I got. If you look at a volt, let's see if it'll let me do this. The units of volts, uh, if you unpack it a little bit, is joules per coulomb. We know joules is a unit of energy, and coulomb is a unit of charge. So voltage is how much energy per charge. That's pretty much it. When you do we do some interesting stuff later on, we're going to connect energy with our energy unit from way early on, right? So if I have a motor, and that motor has a certain power, how can I calculate the change in energy to find the power of the motor? Pretty cool. Just the difference between a non-rechargeable and a rechargeable battery is the chemistry going on on the inside. It's like wet cell versus dry cell batteries. Cool? We'll go with volts? Okay. In order to have a circuit, you need to have three basic things. Source of energy, something to provide your voltage or provide your energy. You need a closed path. Now that closed is a very particular word there. We use closed path and open path and a device which uses the energy. So if I took a battery and I ran a wire just around the battery, um, you would create what's called a short circuit and you would fry the battery. Or if you're wiring a house and you create a short circuit, the um, breakers in the house will blow. That way you don't cause a fire in your house. So if any part of the circuit is open, the device will not work. So for example, if I had another light bulb over here but I did not connect it this light bulb would go off but the other one would not cool so when it comes to when you're building your circuits nine times out of ten if uh, it's not working it's either a the bulb is not screwed in all the way or B your wires are causing a short circuit and it's just, there's no full path to electricity to go. Cool. So why do light bulbs have uh, a screw? Why do they have a screw base? Yeah. 
uh, just so they have a snug fit. Um, because the larger surface area for the bottom of a bulb, the more the easier it is for electricity to flow through it. If there's only one single point and those points don't line up perfectly, you've got you get no bulb. Cool. Was it a giant breadboard? Uh -huh. It was like this small and like you can measure like humidity and like yeah. that. That's pretty cool. Cool. All right. So electricity can be symb symbolic of water pressure. So I'm gonna we're gonna put a pause on this. Don't worry about this slide too much. But when you think about voltage, think about pressure. All right. When you go to the sink, there's a lot of pressure in your house. But when you turn the sink on, your faucet controls how much water comes out. Same way with electricity. Your whatever using it will control or slow down how much is coming out. And that's where this uh, charge per second, which is your current, comes into play. Now we unpack that a little bit more on this slide. So this is like, things get a little important. All right. So current is defined about how quickly a charge can flow through the circuit. So if you have really, really high current, you have a really, really high speed in which those electrons are flowing through. Right. That, this equation right here for current, I equals Q over T, is on your reference sheet. Okay. Speaking about your reference sheet, when you look at your reference sheet, all these electricity ones are going to be on the top right side. Don't they have their own little box? What's that? Don't they have their own They got their own box. little box. All right. The unit of current is amperes or amps or denoted by just the capital A. And if you look at underneath the hood of a current, it's coulombs per second. Now, you don't need to necessarily memorize that as long as you reference your uh, <coughs> reference sheet. It can help you figure that out. Okay. So voltage, everybody's thinking about this voltage. Like high voltage, danger. Well, voltage isn't exactly the part that kills you. It's the current. It's how quickly is that stuff going through your body. Because something could have a voltage of 10 million, but also have a really, really high resistance and slowing down a whole lot, and you'll be totally fine. However, if you take a certain current of a higher voltage, your heart also works off of a current signal. So you can interrupt that signal and then cause you to have a heart attack. Your muscles also work off of a current signal, an electrochemical signal. So that's why if electricians are working on something and they get shocked, they often grab whatever they're being shocked by harder because their muscles are kicked in. So electrician's code is you never work alone. And if your buddy's getting shocked, you're expected to drop kick them. Because if you just push them, now you're getting shocked too. You're expected to drop kick them so that way you don't get shocked, you don't get shocked and they get broken off. Which I think is, yeah. Um, the reason it's it's I is because I stands for intensity. Um, now, one thing I do want you to note is the direction of current is important. So we haven't really talked too much about what these parts mean right here, but I want you to note just really quickly that current flows from the positive terminal of a battery to the negative. <coughs> Let me do it. Right. It's often denoted by just this little carrot symbol right here. Right. That tells you the direction of what the, the electricity is going. Okay. If we start, we're going to play around with some LEDs later on. LEDs only can allow electricity go through them one way. So if you get an LED in backwards, it won't work. So you flip it around, good to go. Science. Cool. Mm. Are we wigging out on me now? No. Yay. Cool. Two types of current. One part we're going to ignore, but I at least want to talk about it just so I can teach you basically. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So you got DC, which is direct current, and AC, which is alternating current. Direct current is what we're going to be dealing with. Batteries, uh, voltage sources. The current in those are constant. And they're always going to be one direction, like a battery. Alternating current, so if we plugged in something into the wall, 
to make energy more efficient, instead of sending all of those electrons just one direction, it actually pushes the electrons and then pulls it. And it causes that motion, causes a current to form, and it's a whole lot more efficient, which is why we power buildings with alternating current and not with batteries. My history on this could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was Edison, who was a big proponent of direct current, but then alternating current was Nikola Tesla. And so he was a big, big, big push on that. I forgot to mention voltage. The reason it's called voltage is discovered by a guy named Volta. And Volta and Galvani had like this, they're both to outdo one another because they're trying to win a girl's hand in marriage. And so there were these two electrical scientists and they were just like super good at what they did. I don't know who got the girl in the end result. I just know they kept out doing one another. Nope. Okay. Let me try that again. Oh, let me go back. Cool. We're only going to do direct current. We're not going to do alternating current. We're going to talk about what does voltage and current get you. This is what's called Ohm's Law. This is like the when you talk about springs and a hook's law is important. When you talk about law of conservation of energies, yada, yada, yada. When you talk about electricity, Ohm's Law is like the go-to textbook answer, easy one-pointer on an FRQ, like according to Ohm's Law, okay, saying that if we graph the voltage versus the current in a circuit, the slope will tell us the resistance. More specifically, if you look at the resistance of an object, let's say like an, a light bulb or uh, a resistor or anything that uses electricity, its resistance is constant in this class. Okay. Notice how this, the slide's got both ways you can talk about this saying potential difference equals current times resistance or electromotive force equals current times resistance. Right. Now our first lab that we're gonna do, we're gonna do this. You're gonna build a simple circuit. You're gonna crank up the voltage, record the current, calculate resistance, make a slope of it, done. Cool? Yeah. What is the, um, the change of voltage That the change that your potential difference is proportional to current. Anytime you see that alpha symbol, oh, saying just being proportional. yes, it means it's directly proportional. When you increase voltage, you increase current. Cool. Yeah. I mean, this will be your first lab. You're just gonna do a simple one one bulb circuit. Graph the slope, or sorry, graph it. Uh, calculate slope. And it should be a pretty straight line. What we find out is that as things get hotter, they tend to get less resistance. Um, but that's not something to worry about in this class because you need to understand thermodynamics. And that math looks a little ugly. So we just say it's constant. What's that? You know what? I don't remember much of thermo. All I remember is the heat death of the universe, entropy and enthalpy, which even after taking it, I forget what they mean. I haven't I looked at them a long time. I thought I knew them in chemistry, and then I got in this class called physical chemistry, which is the physics of chemistry, and then I was like, I know nothing. I know absolutely nothing. Good here? Yeah. So, uh, when you look at Ohm's law, V equals IR, right, it helps you find resistance. So, the for unit resistance is the Ohm, which is also written as this capital Greek letter Omega. Okay. You can try your practice at drawing of the Greek letter Omega real easily, but I just usually just do this. Oop. And just call it down. All right.
So how does your voltage and your current affect, be affected by resistance? So in order for those electrons flying through, in order for that energy to be used, you have to slow those electrons down. So those electrons like come by and kind of like high five all of the atoms inside of a light bulb, and they high five them so fast that that filament gets hot and glows. But since the electrons came by and high-fived them, they slowed down a little bit. And since they slowed down a little bit, you are using that energy. And part of a circuit is something to use the, use the energy in the circuit. Okay. We're not gonna do anything with an actual resistor. So like, because those deal with really, really high resistance. We're gonna look at like the resistance of a light bulb, resistance of Play-Doh. We're gonna do a Play-Doh lab. Huh. We're gonna find the resistivity. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Play-Doh. I've never done that lab before, so we'll see how it goes. Cool. So we got voltage, we got current, we got resistance. Not too bad? No. All right, let's do some math of it. You don't, you don't like me leaning against the board, do you? All right, I'm going to put a pause on this electrical power stuff. Um, and we're going to hold that off till later. Um, we'll see how this goes. Yeah. I don't want to throw stuff at you and not use it. So we'll use it later on. I promise we'll get back to it. So there's two basic, wires to wire, two basic ways to wire a circuit. You can either do it in series or parallel. And these follow Ohm's law, but just in a little bit of different ways. Up on the wall over here, I've got the expanded form about how these work. This is not on your reference sheet. You have to learn how the way it's written on your reference sheet. We'll talk about that way in a second. Okay. This is for the regular physics class. It's just I don't want to freak them out by writing a bunch of Greek on the board. So a series, you can think of a book series where one goes after another, goes after another. You cannot do it out of order. If you try to do it out of order, you're doing it wrong. Parallel means things can go different directions. All we're gonna do now is look at the math here and then keep trying it out. Um, so how can you do either Yes. So it's either A, it's going to be series, B, parallel, or what we talk about later is combination. And when you do a combination circuit, you're going to do the same math that we've done with series and parallel. You just change the order in which you do it. Okay. The fun thing about electricity, it's just like a giant logic puzzle. And I think it's actually fun to figure out how to best solve the circuit. Absolutely. Um, if I were to take one, the like light bulb out of the one in series, the second light bulb, if I were to take this out, the circuit would then be open. Right? The circuit wouldn't work. But if you took the light bulb out of here, the circuit would still be closed. Your just current would only go two directions rather than three. And I think we're really going to see that when I look at the when we look at the picture of series and parallel circuits. Right. How to draw them and whatnot. But uh, we'll get there. Okay. We're doing good? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. We got to talk about some schematic. What is the universal drawing diagrams for certain parts look like? Batteries look like a series of long and short lines. Resistors look like squiggly lines. Voltmeters are just a circle with a B. Ammeters are a circle with an A. 
Surprise, surprise, what do you measure the voltmeter? Volts, ammeters you measure, amps, or current. Switches allow you to open and close the circuit. So now we understand, when I walk over here, we can think of this whole wiring for the lights goes through this switch. And when I flip the switch, I open the circuit. Well, you should be going. Light goes off. Closed circuit. Now electricity can go, and then lights come on. There was a sort of like a spring type thing. Yeah, that's when I, I try to draw springs as more of a wavy, oh, okay. and resistors as a straight, straight lines. And then light bulbs are denoted with a, a loop. But sometimes they're also denoted, and what I got used to drawing with them is, as just a circle with an X through it. Either one of those will work. Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to build a circuit, right, and then you have to draw your circuit. Well, how do you draw your circuit? Usually I recommend is you start the battery and then go from there. All right. If you try to start somewhere in the middle of your circuit, it's easy to get lost. I always start with the direction my current is flowing. So I start with the positive terminal of my battery, draw all the pieces, and then go back to the negative terminal, and then we're good. So if you ever run into problems with your circuit, like, hey, this isn't working, I'm going to start the positive, follow the current to see what it's doing. Um, in terms of how we would end up drawing out, we would draw it with these symbols? Yes. These so are the, used to be a series of symbols, like mm -hmm. The next slide. How does it look like when you draw them? All right. The only thing is that um, voltmeters and ammeters work a little bit differently. Ammeters measures the current, so it has to be in the circuit. Follow me there? If you're going to do a speed check of how fast your circuit's going, ammeters have to be in the circuit. Voltmeters are measuring the potential difference, and in order to do that, they have a resistance of infinity. So if you put a voltmeter in your circuit, what are you doing to your circuit? Stopping, Stopping it. You can now cause it to be an open circuit. So voltmeters go around the devices, ammeters go in your circuit. Cool? And, and it was, you, you said that voltmeters allow it to be like AC versus uh, ammeters allow it to be DC? Voltmeters can measure both AC and DC. Ammeters can measure both AC and DC. It's just in order to measure the voltage of something going through it, you go around it, what ammeters go through it. Literally just wrap around it? Like that. Voltmeters go um, around whatever device you're measuring. Ammeters go in your circuit. So usually when I start building my circuits, I go straight from the battery to the ammeter, and then I build the rest. There's no difference is if I put the ammeter here or at the end, because we're measuring total. Okay. There's an interesting thing that I know called a rheostat. Has anybody heard of a rheostat? Somebody got a dimmer switch at home? Uh, like this, uh, sometimes they're little slidey guys, uh, sometimes yeah. oh, they rotate, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. How do those work? Well, those work by changing the resistance. So if you increase the resistance, what happens to your current? Decrease. It goes down. If you increase, or if you decrease your current, what do you think the, the bulbs do? Increase. Decrease your current. Wait, what? So they get dimmer, right? So if you decrease the resistance, you increase the current, your bulbs get brighter. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so the twisted things are increasing or decreasing the resistance. Yes. Okay. Which then increases or decreases current, because voltage is constant. So, there, so would you say resistance is directly proportional to the amount of light? Nope. Resistance is constant. Uh, how is resistance, resistance constant? Resistance is not affected by how much voltage or current is going through the system. Does that make sense? Well, how does, it, how does it control how much light there is if that's how much? If, how does it, how, if it's not proportional to the light, how does it change the light? 
You get really tricky when you're saying proportional to, because that means as one affects the other, they can go vice versa. Um, resistance is constant. Resistance affects how, how it changes current, because uh -huh. voltage is also kept constant. Okay. So when you look at this outlet, this outlet's got 110 volts going through it. Okay. So I can change how much current's going through there by increasing or decreasing my resistance. Yes. That makes sense? Yes. So if you're increasing or decreasing, it has a stay constant. Resistance? Yeah. Resistance is a material thing, not how much current's going through. Oh. Okay. So if I take an insulator and I shove it into the wall, the resistance of an insulator is infinity. Or close to infinity. It's a really, really high number. Mm -hmm. Which is why electricity doesn't go through an insulator. But a uh, piece of metal, that resistance is really, really low. So when I shove a fork into an outlet, that current whoo, picks up into my hand. Let's all try it. <laughs> Let's all try it. Experiment. No. This is our next lab. Or this Your next lab. This determines who passes the class. <laughs> um, It'll be dead. Who passes away. Cool. So, ammeters go in your circuit, voltages go around. Now let's draw a circuit. All right. How do you draw a circuit? So if here's, my, here's my simple circuit. You start with your battery. So I would start with the battery. The long side being the positive terminal. And then I would follow my current. Draw my light bulb. And by follow and the current, you have to draw the arrows? Or can you just the... You don't have to necessarily draw the direction of the current unless they specifically ask, but it really helps keeping track of what's going on. And, and does it always go from positive to negative, or can it be reversible? You can flip the battery around and then change the direction of the current. No, no I know, but it always initiates from positive to positive. Yes, the current always goes from positive to negative. Cool. Now, what if we did this in series? Well, I'd still, I'd start at the positive side of my battery, go to my light bulbs. I now hit a switch, and then bring it on back home. And, I'm sorry, can you explain why, we, why you have a switch and versus the first one that you didn't have a switch? Well, the first one doesn't have a switch in it, the second two do. And why is that? Just because it's like there. So what it necessarily need? If we're drawing these circuits, we draw with all the pieces that are involved. Uh, no, I know, but if, if we have two light bulbs and we have the battery, do we need a switch? You don't need a switch, no. Yeah. Just this one and have it. So are we going to have to like, draw those like, just based on, like, what's, I can't remember the name of like, a, like, words that say, like, what's happening in the circuit where you're going to have to draw those, or do you... You're talking about, like, an FRQ? Yeah. So when it comes to an FRQ, usually... It's um, what I've seen is they give you a they give you something that looks like this. So they like start with a picture and then tell you to draw it like in the. Not necessarily, but all the math that we're about to do, you have to figure out by drawing the diagram first. Okay. So that's it's not like the question part, but you have to do that to do yes. Mm -hmm. And I believe you could probably squeak yeah, out a point or two by drawing drawing it correctly, okay. but it's not the end point. I've seen people go straight there, but they usually get tripped up on one thing or another. So it's always easier just to draw it out. Like an SPD. Because every once in a while they'll like mix up the wires, like say if I had a third bulb up here. I've seen them do something like tricky, like you have to like keep track of where the wires are going. And so it's easy, like okay, how do I draw this thing? Okay, well I'm starting at the positive. This current goes three directions. One to each bulb, okay, and this wire, oh, this one comes back. So that tells me this bulb actually wouldn't work. Follow me there? And so by taking it back to the positive, the electricity can't flow. Cool? Just to that bulb? Or to the Just to that first bulb. Okay. It would still work on the second two. If I were going to do this correctly, Let's do this correctly. I would draw this circuit here, and then it'd match up over here. 
and they don't have to match up or separate at the same point. They can just go at different points too. Like if you drew that this line and you just brought it over here. Okay. Sorry, if you like brought this line and brought it over there, that yeah. wouldn't matter. That wouldn't matter. You could do the loop de loop connect there. They're all meeting it to the switch? Yeah, okay, so like in the drawing, how they like come together to go yep. to like the side part, so they don't have to, like, they don't need to. You don't, you're drawing what the circuit is doing, okay. not necessarily what the wires are doing. Okay. So you could technically draw it to where all three of these wires meet up back at the switch. You could do that, but that's just, that's just doing too much. You can simplify it, and by simplifying it, you've denoted that your circuit comes back together all into one. Okay. Uh, well, we can look at the math. Hopefully, the math will help us out a little bit. Okay. What time am I looking at? Oh, yeah, plenty of time. All right, we're going to look at the math a little bit on series and parallel, and then we're going to go do our circuit stuff. Yes. This is not given to you. So if you got your reference sheet, go ahead and pull it out. So you can either A, do rote memorization of these, or B, do a conceptual understanding of what is going on here. Remember how we talked about voltage being pressure? Well, in a series circuit, if I have multiple things hooked up to my pressure, my pressure can only go so far. So my voltage on, or my potential difference at each bat, each bulb in this circuit is additive. It is not given on your reference sheet. Current is the same because whatever speed is going through one bulb has to be going through all three of them. What is on your reference sheet is the resistance. So do you see it there on the bottom where it says RS equals the summation of your resistors right. where your number of terms is this. Yep. What does that mean exactly? No. It means it's an additive rule. It's a summation series. Uh, Meaning, summation so when you are looking at resistors in series to find total resistance or effective resistance you add them all together. Cool? That's it. From there, that's all since that's all get on your sheet, you have to deduce the rest of those pieces. So let's do a uh, yeah, let's just do an example. So here's how I want you to do every single circuit. You find the totals, then you go down. If you try to find the pieces that aren't given necessarily, you're going to run into problems where you're going to do algebra mistakes or just conceptual mistakes. So the first thing we want to find is what is the total resistance? What we're always going to run back to is Ohm's law. V total equals I total R total. Do I have voltage total? Look at my circuit, you got 12 oh. volts. Do you have current though? No. So this tells me I have to find resistance some other way. These are three resistors are in series, so what am I going to do with them? You can just add them up. So resistance total is just going to be 6 ohms. Not too bad. All right. Now I have voltage total and resistance total. Can I find total current? Well, yeah. A. This is going to be 12. 
six. Current total comes out to two amps. That's resistance total. Six ohms. I really need you guys to start watching your comm before you come. What is the current across each resistor? Well, if I think about this, okay, these are in series. So that means the rate at which my current flows through is all going to be the same. That's the part you have to pull out. Or just do rote memorization. So since the current is at the same at each one, they all equal 2 amps. Cool, cool. So then what is the voltage drop across each resistor? We're going to apply Ohm's law separately. So the way you denote this, the voltage at one equals the current at one, resistance at one, voltage of two equals current to resistance of two. And then voltage of three Sometimes your <coughs> these denotions are when they talk about resistors specifically. So notice this have one, two, and three ohm resistors. Or you could say like we could call this resistor one, resistor two, resistor three. Okay. We look for voltage. Do I know the current at resistor one? Yeah, it's two. Yep. The resistance of resistor one is one, one, so two times one is two. For voltage two, current is two, resistance is two, two times two is four volts. And the last one, current is still two, resistance is three, three two times three is six. six volts. What was my total voltage? Twelve. What's six plus four plus two? Twelve. Twelve. Is Ohm's law still true? Well, yeah, we just found out the voltage total equals the voltage of one plus two plus three. Following there. So what you're going to do is you're going to build your circuit and you're going to record the voltage using the voltmeter at one, two, and three. If you did it right, you should add them up and they'll be all be about the same. Now it's not going to be perfect because we don't talk about what's going on in the battery. So we don't talk about the resistance of the battery or uh, how that plays a role in affecting it. Okay. Cool. What was on this slide? is what everything I just talked about. So if you need that, you can reference that later. But I am moving on because I'm done talking for today almost. I just want to talk about parallel and then call it done. Here's one thing I want to note. Looking at parallel, do you see how that picture has three different colors in it? Yeah. So your total current can go three different ways and then meet back up. Cool? Mm -hmm. Here's what I don't want you to assume. It's an equal split. Because okay. if the resistance here was really, really high and the resistance in the middle was really, really low, the current wouldn't necessarily split up equally. What we can say, though, is it splits up and it comes back. And these things are called junctions. Right. There's a thing in there called Kirchhoff's rule or Kirchhoff's loop rule. Your con videos do a wonderful job explaining it. Your lab also is going to hit on it a little bit, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But I want you to notice that the math that we just did looks a little bit differently. Remember how current was total? Current was equal to total in series? Since they split up, your three paths are equal to the total now. Follow me there? Mm -hmm. You say that aren't. What's that? So they aren't equal. These are. These three, your three paths are equal to your total. Yeah, oh yeah, but they, can, they don't want to necessarily all be the same. 
They wouldn't necessarily all be the same. Sometimes they will. If each of those light bulbs had the same resistance, they will be. But I don't you. That's easy misconception that they always split up in the even amounts. Yep. All right. Just do the math and you won't get lost. All right. So what does your reference sheet say in regarding this? Oop, come on. Oop, try this again. Oh. Ah, I'm just going to go here. Let me do it. There we go. Your reference sheet <coughs> has it written like this. 1 over RP, which is resistors in parallel equals the summation of your resistors inversely added. It's called an inverse addition rule. Where did we see this before? Um, inverse oh, that was, uh, springs. springs. Springs, right? Springs in series. Inverse. Inverse additives. Yeah. Resistors in parallel, inverse additive. I remember you saying it was different for electricity way back okay. when. You're not given anything else. All right. But we're going to notice if I just go from the top, I think we should be able to solve all this out pretty well. Yep. How come in that circuit it shows flow of current when you have negative terminals in the top? That's the electron flow and the current. So electrons go one way, current goes the other way. So, uh, that's more of an AP Physics 2 thing. You look specifically at electron flow and current and how it affects a magnetic field. We'll talk about that with Michael actually today. Um, uh, we just don't talk about that in this class. Okay. Cool. So, what is the total resistance here? Well, what kind of circuit is this? It's a. Uh Parallel. So all we're going to do is that first thing we do is that inverse additive rule. So one over R T equals one over R one plus one over R two, so on and so forth. So what you get is. Does everybody know how to use the inverse button on the calculator? So five to the negative first is the same thing as one over five. If you learn how to use this button, it makes your life a whole lot easier when looking at um, circuitry stuff. So we got 5 inverse plus 7 inverse plus 9 inverse. What most people forget to do is they'll say resistance total equals 0. Point Whatever they got. What was that? 0. 0.4539668. Am I done? No. No. You have to, have to, have to take the inverse of it again. So all I do is find out my answer, hit the inverse button again, and I get resistance total equal always to be 2.2. It's a little button. It looks like x to the negative first on some calculators. It looks like 1 over x on some calculators. You just gotta find it. Your calculator has a derivative button. That's cool. Maybe you just apply three of the X and then put it in. No, you just got a one over that box symbol. So we found total resistance. A couple things to note. Resistance total is always, 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 always smaller than any of your resistors in parallel. Oh, okay. That's what's always. It will always be smaller than your lowest resistor. I don't care what numbers you use, math always comes out and your resistance goes down. So, if resistance goes down, what do you think happens to the current? Skyrockets. So, if you look at the light bulbs in the ceiling, mm -hmm. since they're nice and bright, they're probably hooked up in what? Parallel. Parallel. 
Because if I take one light bulb out, does the whole thing go out? No. So if you hooked your whole house up in series, one, your energy bill would be through the roof. And then two, anytime you took a light bulb out or a light bulb blew, the whole house would go out. Oh, that'd be so hard to find the one. Yep, and then you figure it out. Like old school Christmas bulbs, you have to go find the one that, that blew. Oh, wow. That's because they're hooked up in series. Okay. Do I have total voltage? Do you? Look at the circuit. Yes, eight. I got total voltage, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. I got total resistance? Yeah. Can I find total current? Duh. Sure can. B total equals I total, R total? Eight equals I total. Resistance is 2.2. .2. So current total equals. We'll take divide by 2.2. Two. 3.6. Rounded. Okay. What am I going to do about voltage, though? So what is the voltage across each resistor? Heard, heard two things. I think you're on the same track. What did you say, Griff? Voltage is constant. Think of that water pressure. That water pressure is built up in the system and there's three different paths to go. So voltage total equals voltage one, which equals voltage two, which equals voltage three. That looks like it's a not equal sign, so I'm gonna so the voltage at each resistor is going to be eight. eight points. And that's different for when they're in series, right? Absolutely. Okay. Because they're additive in series, Understand. but the same in parallel. Some crazy stuff. Last one, then we'll call it done, just because I don't want to beat you to death with notes. That's next period. What's next period? Eight push. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. How to find the current across each resistor? Do I know the voltage at each resistor? Does. Do I know the resistance of each resistor? Of course. Absolutely. So you're going to do V1 equals for each resistor. So we're going to have 8 equals I and times 5. We're going to do 8 equals I times 7. And then 8 equals I times 9. That's 1, 2, and 3. Mm -hmm. You so only do the inverse for when you're applying the total position the total resistance. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's because it follows a relationship we don't talk about in this class. That's a log log rule. So if you made a graph of the log versus log of resistance total and resistors at, at resistors in um, parallel you would get the linearization of that data. But we don't, we, we, which day, inverse additive, don't talk about exponents or anything like that. So, current of one is gonna be 1.6. Current of two, oh, run out of space here. Hit the no man zone. No man's land. No man's land. So, current 1 equals 1.6 amps. Current at 2 is going to be 8 divided by 7. So that's 1.14. Current at 3 is going to be 8 divided by 9. So that's going to be 0 0.8. 9 amps. What was my total current? <coughs> 3.6. What do you think if I added the current at 1, 2, and 3 added together? What would it equal? 3.6. 3.6. Pretty close to it, except for rounding. But. So, we just have shown 
Kirchhoff's loop rule, talking about junctions, about how when you're in parallel, current will split up, but then come back together to still equal total. Cool? So mm -hmm. it's conserved. Kind of. Right. Uh, for the sake of not beating you to death with notes, we're going to call that done there, and then we'll just do some more on Wednesday. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put a pause on that, and then we're going to go build a circuit.